<laughs> Welcome back. More great conversation with Wendell Fitzgerald. Uh, my name is Peter Melton. Great to be here with you exploring what's going on with the economics of our land, what's going on with our American dream, what's going on in the world and how it ties into everything. Because, ah, boy, as I learn more about this, we're we're giving away what the community is creating. The community creates the value of the land, and then we give it to the private owner, and then the community is stuck trying to figure out how they're going to keep libraries open or keep schools open or do public transit or all these things, and they're begging to try to figure out how to make the community run when all the, all the value that the community is creating is going into private home owners and business owners pockets well precisely so so the, the idea when one understands uh, the, 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 the 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 fundamentals of, of the economics of land that land value is completely created by the community the existence of population the, what the, what the people are doing by way of being productive <clears throat> and then after communities uh, evolve they are providing government service local services uh, and all of which uh, increases land value. The, the, the better the schools are, for example, in a community, the people are willing to pay more for the land to be there to send their kids to school to, to build their houses. And usually people don't think in those terms because they're buying a house, but what they're really buying is a house and land. So when you look at the, the value of the land underneath the house and under everything that goes on, uh, the, the, more, the more people, the more wonderful things going on in the community, the more valuable the land is, the location right. is. And uh, uh, precisely what you said, uh, since, since the community needs a, a source of revenue to provide its services, uh, what, uh, what better uh, source of revenue to go after than the value that the community creates? And the only value in economics that the, <coughs> economically that the community creates in terms of a money value uh, is land value. And all the economists agree. I mean, this is... From the beginning, this is the economists agreed on this, and they, they, you know, nobody's arguing. Nobody argues with these things. They just don't talk about them. So, if the community, as the community needs a source of revenue, if it would depend solely on or primarily on assessing against the the value of land that it creates to pay for the services that make the you know that actually increase land value, this would be a just uh, arrangement, and uh, the community wouldn't have to tax anything else like our homes. Or our businesses, or our any of our activities, or our wages. So in economics, there's only three things to tax. Uh, you know, governments, the community needs a source of revenue. <clears throat> and what we've done historically is we said, well, uh, there's only three things to tax: land, labor, or capital. And most of our taxation falls on labor and capital, on the active factors of production. And uh, some of it does, in fact, fall on. It does assess against the, the community-created land value. Uh, like the property tax part, uh, property tax is a direct tax on land value. That part of that property tax uh, is a tax that is, doesn't fall in the building. is a, is an assessment against the community created land value that's taken back for community purposes. This is a great tax. The tax on the building is a total um, a disincentive to building. is is a penalty for people who build. Uh, a tax on your wages is a penalty for you being active and 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 working hard. A sales tax, every kind of tax on labor and capital, there's all kinds of different. So the whole issue of taxation is very interesting. What is it, when you have a tax, what is it that is taxing? Uh, as I said, most of these taxes fall on labor and capital or the products thereof. Now, if the tax that falls on a house, the value of a house is on the product of labor and capital, something that had to be built that had a cost of production, right. uh, which is a penalty to these things. So they're kind of interesting when you see the community, uh, historically, we've had the opportunity all along uh, humanity always had the opportunity to say, look, Mr. Landowner, you're welcome to have as much land as you need for your legitimate purposes, but uh, pay us insofar as we're raising the value of your land and you're, you're, you're able to charge higher rents, you give that back to us and right. let us use that for community purposes. So what can we do as we start to understand this? I mean, I guess part of it is, is just education, starting to, to hear this, starting to get this out to where people grasp what's happening. Um, and and as, as we educate ourselves and become aware of this, what steps can we take? Is it about a, a shift in property taxes? This is a pl good place to start. The property tax is, that part of the tax, that, uh, of the property tax that falls on land values is a great tax, is this tax that takes back to the community that which the, the value that the community creates. 
So I see down the, 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 the Henry George, when he wrote uh, back in the 19th century, s proposed this idea that, that there be no taxes on, any, on labor or capital at all, that there only be a tax on land value. Now, maybe this isn't practical you know, right away, but we could head in this direction. And the property tax is already doing a, a part of it already. So w what I propose and what's been proposed by the folks who follow this uh, all these years, since he wrote, since Henry George wrote, is phase, it, phase this thing in over a five or ten year period. You don't do it all at once. But change the property tax and just focus on that so that in five years, let's say, you, you reduce all the taxes on, on improvements and increase the tax on land values. So that at the end of, of that phase in period, there's, there's only a tax on land values and none on improvements. And, and by doing that, what you've done is you're, you're saying like the community, is that, in far, so far as that tax is concerned, it's going to be falling on land values only. And we're going to untax and unburden and unpenalize what people do by building homes and businesses and apartments. Right. And if you don't tax the improvements, then people are going to do more improvements. Yeah. And what happens where this has been done? Now, these, this is a practical solution that's actually been used in many places in the world, and in this country, in the U.S., the place that is, this, that there's one state that allows this. Pennsylvania has allowed cities to uh, tax their land values at a higher rate than their building values. And there's a couple of dozen cities that do that now. And so back in the 70s, P Pittsburgh did this. And they finally ended up, they, over a period of, of, uh, of years, they, they taxed their land values 11 or 10 or 11 times more heavily than they did their improvement values. And what happened in the process, the whole point of this is not just some abstract thing of economic justice. What the, the, it's a practical, uh, the practical result is that Pittsburgh rebuilt itself. Urban, sp urban blight ended. The, the downtown rebuilt itself. If you've ever been to Pittsburgh, it's, it's doing quite well. And so the, 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 the larger picture, the reason to do this, not only for capturing the value that community creates, but you want to do this for practical reasons. Because the result is, and I'll, I'll list a number of things, it ends urban blight, it ends urban sprawl, it solves, it ends land speculation almost completely, depending on how heavily you tax land values. Right now, all of the incentive is to speculate with land. And all of our uh, environmental problems are, I say, stem from the fact that people can make money by speculating with the body of Mother Earth, either the land or with, with the natural resources. And if they had to pay, if everybody who owned a piece of land or had all our resources had to pay back into the community, that the, the community, community created value of that land, speculation in land would stop. And the only thing, reason that you'd ever have a piece of land is for real, actual use. And <clears throat> what would happen immediately is that the, the, the high cost of housing would come down because the speculative value of land would fall, would actually disappear. And the only thing left would be the real value of land, which is much less than the market. So c coming back to the current day situation of the housing market and the housing boom, the housing bubble that just burst, it's really the land bubble that just burst, this would have, this would have prevented all of that. So <clears throat> there's much more to be said about all this. But uh, anybody who looks into this, and I recommend that you take these ideas. With these ideas alone, if I, you never heard anything more about it from me, uh, one can go out and, and analyze problems uh, and, and see what's really at the core of many things that uh, are not understandable otherwise. Right, and you can uh, Google Henry George for lots of more information about this train of thought, where, it, where this came from. Share these videos, talk about these ideas, get the, let's raise the education of what this system is, because it really does tie more and more into all aspects. The reason why we're at war, the challenges exactly. we're having with environment, the way that ah, the way all of it is working ties into this. And if you give yourself time to learn a little bit more, you'll see that you'll have this aha moment that I've had, saying, "Wow, I get, I see a whole new picture now, and how this this these elements tie in to everything that we're up to." Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, go for it, people.